Lately, many parents have been asking me about this latest protocol involving a prebiotic called inulin for restoring gut health and stimulating the vagus nerve and reportedly having amazing results in children with autism and a whole array of diverse medical conditions as well. The base of the protocol is prebiotic fiber, inulin, uh, an omega-3 oil and extra virgin olive oil as well. So foods that are high in, in inulin include wheat, shallots, artichokes, chicory, rye and leeks. But before we talk about inulin as a prebiotic, I would actually like to widen the discussion about fibre more generally. A recent review article, Dietary Fibre in the Era of Microbiome Science, is actually a very good read and I would encourage um, you to put the title into your browser and download it and have a read of this paper. So fibre itself has uh, many properties. It's uh, soluble, insoluble, viscous and um, whether it's fermentable or non-fermentable as well. But remember, there are many, many different types of fibre in food and these include things like uh, cellulose, uh, fructile oligosaccharides, gums, pectins and yes, inulin, psyllium and resistant starch. So when we eat food, we don't eat just one single fibre, we're actually eating a whole different range of fibres in our food that comes in fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds and so forth. So some of the key points from this article. Any beneficial response from digesting fibre depends on your existing gut flora. Diet influences which microbes colonise, flourish, are retained or disappear in your gut throughout life. And diet with very little fibre actually leads to a loss of gut bacterial diversity. Any benefit from increasing dietary fibre will vary from individual to individual and depends on the current bacteria in your gut, which has been influenced by what you've eaten in the past. In this review, they detail a very interesting study done in mice. Basically, they took germ-free mice, mice that had no bacteria in their gut. Then they introduced a human bacterial microbiome into their gut. So, on a high-fibre diet, the bacteria flourished. Next, they put these mice onto a low-fibre diet, and the diversity of the gut bacteria decreased. However, when they actually put them back onto a high-fibre diet, the gut bacteria only partially recovered. When these mice had offspring, the second generation of mice had an even less diverse gut flora, and when they were put onto a high fibre diet, the gut diversity recovered even less. And as the third generation of mice were born, these mice had even less microbial diversity in their gut than their parents. And when they were put onto a high fibre diet, they weren't able to recover much of the original gut flora at all. So we do know that in autistic children, they actually do have a decreased microbiome diversity compared to other children. Is this why we are seeing an increase in autism incidence with each generation of children? Because with each generation we are seeing a, a decrease and a loss of some of the microbial diversity in our children's gut? This is maybe a piece of the puzzle, but it's certainly not the full answer. So how much fibre should we actually be consuming? The Australian recommendations uh, state that for adult males, they should be consuming 30 grams per day and females 25 grams per day. Children, 18 grams per day. When they actually look at the adult consumption, it's closer to 12 to 18 grams per day, way below what we actually should be consuming. So our gut bacteria are basically starving for fibre. And have we already lost part of our gut microbiome? The microbiome of children from West Africa with a fibre-rich African diet has been compared to that of children in Italy. And in these hunter-gatherer children, they actually have a more diverse microbiome and more diverse digestive enzymes for digesting fibre as well. The dietary habits of the Hadza tribe of Tanzania are similar to those of our human ancestors. And interestingly, their gut microbiome contains unclassified bacteria and has a much broader microbial diversity as well. So it actually would appear that we have already lost microbial diversity and specific bacteria as a result of our modern diet, which will not ever get back. And an interesting point in this article was that a diet deficient in fibre was linked with Clostridium difficile infection. Now why is that important? Because in the autism gut, we certainly know that there is an increase in Clostridium uh, in the gut of children with autism. And the higher the, the uh, clostridial load, the more severe the autistic symptoms seem to be. 
And the addition of either inulin or a fiber mixture reduced the burden of Clostridium difficile in support of a microbial diversity favoring exclusion of Clostridium difficile. So by introducing inulin, what they've managed to do is actually decrease the Clostridium difficile abundance in the gut. And what we do know is that when we do decrease Clostridium within the gut of the autistic individuals, they certainly do improve in the severity of their symptoms. So, we actually have a group of autistic children with Clostridium difficile in their gut that may improve with inulin or a fiber mixture. So how do you know if your child may have Clostridium difficile in their gut? An organic test, which is a simple urine test, will certainly tell you if your child has an overgrowth of Clostridium difficile. Certainly this particular test actually tests for a number of uh, Clostridia species within the gut. But there is a specific marker for Clostridium difficile, for cresol, that if it's ele elevated, there's a very high probability that your child may have an overgrowth of Clostridia within the gut. And if treated, they certainly may improve. This is a 2018 study, a prebiotic intervention study in children with autism spectrum disorders. And in this study, they took 30 children. Half of these children were actually on an exclusion diet, mainly gluten-free, casein-free. The other children were actually on an unrestricted diet, basically more higher harb and lower fruits and vegetables. So each of these two groups, they actually put them into either a prebiotic or a placebo. The prebiotic that was actually used in this case was galacto oligosaccharide. And one of the interesting results out of this study was when they actually looked at the anti-sociability score, which the lower you are on this graph, the better you are socially, and the higher you are on this graph, the worse you are socially. So those children, interestingly, they're on an exclusion diet. Remember, that's gluten-free, casein-free, or GAPS. Socially, they actually did better. Those that were on an unrestricted diet, and they were given a prebiotic, socially, they actually got worse. Now think about that. Children that are actually on a gluten-free, dacine-free diet or GAPS and so forth, they actually got better. The children that are actually uh, on an unrestricted diet, they got worse. I think that's a very interesting uh, uh, result and something to keep in mind. So each individual is very complex and unique. If there's one thing I've learned on my autism journey, it's that whether it be a pharmaceutical drug specific diet supplement, therapy, or protocol, there is no one universal intervention that will benefit every single child. But getting the diet right for your child is pretty much top of my list. And as we have seen, if you improve the diet, you improve the gut microbiome, and you will see an improvement in your child. So some key points, we need fiber, and we need lots of it from real food. If we have low dietary fiber, well, we will also have low microbial, di microbial diversity in our gut. And low fiber long term, you'll actually lose some bacteria and you'll lose it forever. The quality of your current diet may be important when introducing prebiotics. And I suggest other supplements as well. So I would be interested in your personal experience with inulin or any other prebiotic. Not just, oh, well, it was great and that's it, or it was the worst thing ever that I tried for my child. As a medical scientist, I'm interested to know if you introduced inulin before changing your child's diet. Or were you on an exclusion diet like gluten and casein free GAPS paleo? Or your child was restricted to chicken nuggets, rice, pasta, milk, and minimal fruits and vegetables. I would be especially interested in any comments from parents that have done comprehensive stool and urine testing. And especially before and after the, the inulin protocol and what it actually did show. My name is John Patrika. I'm a medical scientist, naturopath, and father to an autistic child. And I still love this journey of autism discovery as I learn new things every single day. And I love sharing what I've learned. Real science is driven by observation. Thank you for listening. Please share and don't forget to share your comments below.